Welcome back everyone, it is me, Matimus, and thank you for joining me today. We are discussing military robotics today, and how really they're progressing, and how the future of military robotics is going to kind of uh, pan out in the future. Now, of course, anything that is portrayed in this video is purely my own opinion and information that I have sourced from a public forum online, so uh, take it with a pinch of salt, and of course I'm not a subject matter expert, so uh, just, uh, you know, realize the fact that I'm only putting this information out as a informative slash educational stance. So, the robotic systems rolling out already in this prototype stages are far more capable, intelligent, and autonomous than the ones that we've seen in Iraq and Afghanistan. The next wave of robots that we will see deployed on land will mostly be the new and improved versions of already existing platforms. For example, iRobot's original Packbot just had a digital camera that sent back views of what the robot was seeing, making it essentially just a mobile pair of binoculars for the guys on the ground. Now, most Packbots actually perform an EOD role with the ensuing addition of a fairly simple arm and gripper that can actually defuse landmines and IEDs. But the new add-ons are developed, the same robot will take on the wider set of battlefield roles. For example, the companies that have already tested out Packbot armed with a good old fashioned shotgun because it's so versatile. The robot can now fire a variety of ammunition including non-lethal rubber bullets and even potentially more powerful ammunition to take on threats. Another version is called the Red Owl or Robotic Enhanced Detection Output with Lasers, which uses lasers and sound detection equipment to find any sniper who dares shoot at the robot or accompanying troops and then instantly targets them with an infrared laser beam. Another example is the first version of the SWORDS system, which still needs a remote human operator to be situated within a mile or two which can keep the human without the danger zone being in effect. The SWORDS itself is being replaced by a new version named after the Roman god of war, the MARS, or Modular Advanced Armed Robotic System, carrying a more powerful machine gun and 40mm grenade launchers. For a non-lethal setting though, it does pack a green laser and a dazzler with tear gas and loudspeakers, just in case you want to do some riot control. As these new systems evolve, we will soon see an entirely new unmanned combat vehicle hit the battlefield. One such prototype was the Gladiator, described as the world's first multi-purpose combat robot. It came out of a partnership between the Marine Corps and the Carnegie Mellon University. About the size of a golf cart, the vehicle is controlled by a soldier wielding a controller, similar to a video game controller, and a software plugin which allows it to be upgraded to a semi-autonomous and then fully autonomous mode, which basically means it can go do its own thing. Fully loaded, it costs $400,000 and carries two machine guns, potentially with 600 rounds of ammunition, anti-armor rockets, non-lethal weapons, and it is just all-round nasty. Not all ground robots will take on combat roles though. For instance, medics have long been in the most dangerous jobs of the battlefield, pushing forward to where those who have been injured or attacked from. A former Army Special Forces officer actually explained that the generic pull of a robot solution is to actually allow these vehicles to pick up casualties and pull them off the ground without having to send the medic into the danger area. An early entry into the medbot field is yet to be another improved version of the packbot, known as the bloodhound, ironically. Whenever a soldier is hurt, an alert will go out to the robot and it will find the wounded soldier on its own. Once there, the robot's human controller, who might be located anywhere in the world, will check out the soldier via the video link and treat them using the robot's onboard medical payload, which will include a stethoscope, very likely quite cold, <laughs> and uh, liquid bandages, automatic syringes, dispensers of morphine, and medicines, etc, etc, which is pretty darn impressive. Of course, robots will have a hard time replacing the compassion of a real-life medic, though. As one Special Forces soldier has said, the last thing they really want to see is a robot coming for them if they're about to die. They'd much rather see a human, and I can totally understand that. Of course, drone technology is huge. There is a huge next generation coming out of UAVs, or unmanned aerial vehicles, or systems, and will be a mix of upgraded current systems with converted vehicles that are flying by people. Now, this is scary stuff because it really does mean autonomous fighter jets, or autonomous bombers, or autonomous reconnaissance vehicles, but that is something that I think we've always kind of had in the background and we see as potentially an option for militaries around the world. At the extreme end of the scale, a host of robotics are actually being miniaturized. For instance, the US Air Force lab researchers have built a rocket engine that fits on the tip of a pencil. Some believe that microsystems could eventually go down to the nano scale, that is the molecular level, which basically allows for robots to be turned into almost microorganisms that can fly long, long distances but be barely ever even seen. 
Um, we're talking about 78 atoms in size, you know, chemically powered nanomotors, all this kind of insane technology that could come out. Tiny engines allow tiny machines, and tiny machines mean teeny tiny robots or nanobots that can be very good at doing reconnaissance, or worse, you know, we're talking about things that can actually attack people in, in swarms, and a lot of you have been talking about on my channel, hey Matt, let's talk about robots and, you know, the ability of robots to swarm and drone swarms and all that sort of stuff. Folks, I'm, I'm for sure, uh, you know, very, very nervous for what will happen in, in many years to come as to what will happen with, you know, technology that could replace the soldier on the ground. If bots go to war, there is the potential for um, conflict zones that are purely just going to be robotic battles. It'll be fought uh, between robot and, and machine. It won't be people v people. Um, I mean, I'm going out to town a little bit here. Of course, it's a little uh, sci-fi-ish. But, you know, the, the technology is... It's, progressing so quickly now that I think we are starting to see governments looking into these options and these packages for their troops to protect their troops to prevent, you know, um, people getting, you know, taken out by IEDs or requiring medical assistance or, you know, just needing some surveillance. And the new technology that's coming out now is just incredible. Some of the heavy machinery and the, the weaponry that we're seeing just in this footage alone really surprises me. We're looking at 50 caliber machine guns, mini guns, grenade launchers, all this sort of stuff that can really put firepower on the ground without having to mount it all on top of these drivable vehicles um, that require, you know, crew members. We're talking about potentially robotic tanks robotic infantry fighting vehicles uh, now understandably um, robots are going to finally get into the point where we can use them onto the battlefield effectively I think we're still in that trial and testing phase where you know certain applications aren't quite ready yet it seems as though we're seeing more and more of it being showcased around the world though in terms of its capabilities it is interesting to know that in the future do you think that we're going to have you know, robot v robot battlefield and conflict zones where, you know, boots on the ground aren't even there. There is no human versus human interaction in terms of combat. I don't think it's ever going to happen in our lifetime. I think we've got a little bit sci-fi with you here. But it is something to think about. It's something that, you know, could be in the potential options for many, many, many years down the line. No one ever wants war, of course. I particularly don't. Uh, but there are options for having to do other things uh, other than fighting that these robots can do. Now, for me, on a standpoint of personal opinion, and purely this is my personal opinion as to what I think will happen, happen in the future with robots. I think mostly we're going to see this technology focus on the logistics role, actually producing uh, heavy equipment to troops that need it. In my particular case, you know, ammunition, heavy artillery rounds being brought to the front instead of the guys having to haul it off the trucks. We're having robots that can literally just pull it off and bring it to the gun line. And that would be very interesting to see. I don't think we're going to again see that kind of technology very much in, in our lifetime or our careers in this time period that we're in right now but you know maybe in 20 30 years we will have technology that is very autonomous that allows us to you know resupply very very quickly i think in terms of combat roles um, robots really have a long way to go there's also that kind of ethical decision as to why we're allowing you know robots to autonomously potentially uh, go into war uh, i always feel that if we're going to use that kind of technology it should be under the hands and guidance of a human being but that's uh, something that you know uh, we have to, as, as a species, look into in the many, many years to come uh, when looking into this kind of technology. So folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit or took a little bit away from uh, what we're going to be seeing or the things that we're going to be seeing in the future. I'd love to hear your opinion on it also. Um, of course, my opinion is purely just my own. I'm taking information that I have found online and kind of just putting a, a kind of a thought to it. It's informative and educational thought. It is not a biased opinion to say something is good or bad or not. Uh, but it is just a very interesting topic that I thought I'd just discuss. And, you know, let's hope the future will bring positivity to this kind of technology in the future. So, anyway, folks, uh, if you want to support my channel, leave me a uh, like in this video and a comment. And also go check out my Patreon account, which is on the link box below in this video. All the best. Have a wonderful day and bye-bye.